It is a true honor to receive this award, especially from my friend and colleague, Mary Chesney. I am deeply touched, and I am more touched because I was nominated by my peers, and as everyone knows how much I am devoted to my students, many of them were my pediatric students and my DMP students, so I am thrilled. As nurse practitioners reached a milestone this year, their 50th, I reached a milestone too, my 60th birthday. <laughs> and I too have reflected upon my history and reflected upon what it means to be a nurse, an advanced practice nurse. When I was told I had a few minutes to speak, a very few minutes, and I tried to time it, I thought about what I could say. But I knew that you would learn so much over the next few days about health policy and advances in nurse practitioner, the complexity of health care, I decided that I would talk to you in a couple of minutes about what I've been doing since I turned 60, and that's been reflecting. Reflecting quite a bit about what it means to be a nurse and where we come and where are we going. And actually, I've been attending two meetings since Christmas that help frame my comments so that I can be brief and pithy. That's a word I learned in my doctoral education, pithy. <laughs> One of them was actually the Doctoral of Education Conference. And now we've come to the conclusion that we should have doctorate as the entry level, terminal degree. I don't know why we call anything a terminal degree when we know that learning is lifelong. But we're OK on that. But now the debate is, what can each doctoral degree do? And what's allowed within each doctoral degree? And I said to myself, not another debate. Here we go again. The next meeting that I went to, Dave, was fellows in the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. And each group was given a task to look at some of the white papers and position statements. And I think I was put in a default group. I'm very easygoing. If you need someone to fill in, they usually put me in, because I knew it wasn't one I had chosen to be in. And it was a, um, talking points on the, how to talk to the public or legislators about what a nurse practitioner is. And the group agreed it was outdated because mostly it was just listing, listing tasks. And we thought, why are we defining ourselves in just a view of tasks? Barbara Safried, who many of you know, very loyal, legal, supportive nurse practitioners, has advised many times to avoid listing, not because of what you list, but because of what you forget to list sometimes. So we rewrote the whole thing. And that framed what I'd like to tell you in the next couple of minutes that I reflected upon. And if you follow my thoughts, how I think all the time. And it is a story, Dr. Chesney, because I always had a story. Long ago in the pre-technology days, when I was a doctoral student, long before iPhones and iPads and even laptops, if you can believe it, even when households did not have their own computers, we did things the long distance way, um, hard US mail, interviews in person. I had an assignment in my leadership course uh, to critique um, two different nursing leaders. And with the bravado that only comes with the young, I decided I was going to interview them in person. So I wrote them a letter, sent it in the mail, and lo and behold, they both agreed. So the first leader that I interviewed was Dorothea Oram. And I asked Ms. Oram, what possessed you to develop your model of nursing? And she said to me and shared, and I won't share with you the many hours of our taped conversations, although they are in the nursing archives at Boston University. She shared with me that she was struck that if nursing was really going to be able to defend itself as a science, we needed to identify our unique body of knowledge. But every time she heard nurses talking about what they did, it was a very narrow description that was focused on caring for the sick. But she knew how much we did in caring for the well, but we never talked about it. We never discussed how much input we had and how much savvy we had on keeping people healthy, on how much other ways of caring we did besides doing for. And she shared there were other ways of caring that she identified as supporting, teaching, guiding, and providing a developmental environment. Does that not sound what we do as pediatric nurse practitioners? It especially resonated for me because my specialty is taking care of children with special needs. And providing a developmental environment was the majority of what I did every single day. 
And then as I progress to be a teacher and a mentor and working with others, isn't that what we do as preceptors and teachers and mentors? Teaching, guiding, supporting, providing a developmental environment, and a lot of that highly skilled doing for. And she emphasized that we needed to be able to be articulate when we talk to each other and to the profession and to the public so that we really could validate our role, not just in the hospital settings and when people were sick, but when people were well, so that we could really be valued and useful and that we could reach our potential. The second leader that I had the great privilege of speaking with was Martha Rogers. Night and day leaders that I was speaking with. Somewhat daunting, but she actually got kind of a kick out of me. First of all, she too doesn't speak with periods or exclamation points or commas and quite quickly, so we were kindred spirits at that time. But she also liked the idea that I was a full-time clinician out to get my doctorate in a cohort of others that were either executive nurses or teachers, professors, that had a reason for getting their doctorate at the time. And when she asked me why I was getting my doctorate, I simply answered, well, to advance the science. That's why I'm here. This was the early 80s. Because Martha Rogers thought back in the 50s that the entry level for all professional nurses should be the doctorate. Because she believed that the population we cared for is so complex, unitary man, that the mind, body, and soul are so complex and united that we can't dissect them. That we needed to be educated in the university setting. We needed much more than pathology and sciences. We needed philosophy and theology and all the humanities so we could understand the population we care for. I'm sure she would be delighted to know years later that what people thought she was crazy is now coming to fruition. That we do need to be educated at the high level. I share these two thoughts with you, that nursing is more than one way of caring, and nurses need to be highly educated, because I think that what goes around comes around, and maybe it takes us a bit longer. But isn't it important that we stop debating over what each of us can do, and we stop worrying about putting us in those boxes of looking at mutually exhaustive categories because what Martha Rogers said was that we are more than the sum of our parts and that we shouldn't try to break us down because then we are less than what we have to offer. And what Dorothea Orm said, if we're going to advance the science, we need to be able to articulate all that we do, not just part of what we do. And my words to you in closing are as you celebrate what we are this week, Think about all the opportunities that you have to nurse. When someone asks you what you are, don't try to define what a nurse practitioner is. We've been around for 50 years. If someone asks what a lawyer is, or a dentist, or a teacher, they don't go into a description. They say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teacher, I'm a dentist, I'm a nurse practitioner. That's it, 50 years. And I am proud that I have taken caring, and so have you, to a science. And I care for my children, I care for my students, and I care for my colleagues. And if I find that my colleagues have the skills and the competency to engage in scholarship, then they should be able to engage in scholarship to advance the science. If I find that they need help, then for goodness sake, nurse them. Teach them, guide them, provide that developmental environment, and we will be so much stronger. And look at this room. What a strong community of clinical scholars and experts, and that's my wish for you. Thank you so much for giving me this award in honor of Henry K. Silver, a visionary who could see how much nurses had to offer, and I cannot thank you enough.